All right, good evening, everybody. Terry Daniel here, voice actor and coach from Minneapolis. I welcome you to our first ever free voiceover webinar with all four coaches from our company on the line tonight to answer questions and to talk about the voiceover industry. We'll talk, we'll tell stories and tips of uh, what we did when we first started, and hopefully you'll uh, you'll um, be entertained and appreciate the candor as well. And uh, we we do have a a great presentation. Uh, for you tonight. So Jan, Trish, and Rob, I'm going to keep you muted here until I get to the uh, the the next slide here. But uh, do me a favor, try to, if you've got questions in mind, uh, write them down, you know, type them out on your, your, your note app on your iPhone or whatever. And then I think what we'll do in the last 10 to 15 minutes, we'll take a few of those questions live. We'll also read a few of them in the question box. There's a little uh, Q&A ba uh, Q box right in the GoToWebinar widget that you can use to ask any questions related to voiceovers. We've got 7,000 people on the call right now from, okay, that's, I'm exaggerating. There's uh, looks like we do have about 70 or 80. So be people from all over the country and even lots of eager talents overseas enjoying the uh, presentation. So uh, we're going to unmute our other coaches. All right. One moment, guys. All right. So who the heck are we? I want to introduce my team because uh, I, I could I wouldn't be not only would I not be in business without these talented voice actor and coaches, but uh, I would pretty much be having a nervous breakdown on a, on a daily basis because, uh, frankly, organization isn't one of my best skills. But I would like to to introduce. First of all, I'd like to introduce Trish Bassani. How about a thunderous roar of applause for Trish? Ooh. Hi, Terry. Can you hear Hello. the uh, Can you hear the thunderous roar of applause? I, I can. It's I can feel it here in New Jersey. You just yeah. Oh my God! It's, I know it's my electric. whole house is vibrating. Yep. It's electric. <laughs> it's absolutely electric. And next up, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jan Anderson. What up? What up? What up? All Thank right. you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Jan is uh, one of our coaches who's actually older than I am. How dare you? I know. God, I'm, <laughs> I'm starting off with some really bad jokes. I, I promise I'll improve my material as this goes. I wish it was a joke. It's the damn truth. I know. And on the and on the bong, I mean Mike, Rob Marley, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! You can't make it up. All right. Well, here we're going to talk about. A, I, I want you guys to kind of maybe. Well, actually, maybe I should put this one up. <laughs> this is real this is what we really look like why can't i see anything <laughs> can't you, can't you can't you're see better off trish yeah <laughs> but the rest of you guys can see the screen share right yeah i can okay good uh well let's start trish with you tell us how you got started and how long you've been in voiceovers and one really cool thing about you that has nothing to do with voiceovers uh, well, I got started, it, it feels honestly, like compared to what it is now back in the dark ages, <laughs> uh, it, it, things have changed so much, but, uh, I've been in the business, uh, for 20 years now and, um, full time for fifth, this is my 15th year full time. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of, I, I guess I started as a radio DJ, um, in a classic rock station. Somebody mentioned voiceover. I started looking into it. And next thing I know, I had a coach and got demos and yada, yada. So um, that's kind of how things, but I, you know, back in the days of CDs when like yes. before MP3s were really a thing. So I had to send out CDs and build up a business. So I Perfect. did that in 2004 and yeah. Um, something fun about me, I have totally jumped on the, um, <laughs> the uh, the craft beer bandwagon. I love stouts and porters <laughs> and pretty much anything from New Jersey. Uh, there's actually a ton of breweries that have popped up. So I've kind of gotten to be a big fan of just, just trying them here and there. So <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Trish is uh, just a dynamite coach as well, uh, especially with marketing and script technique and delivery. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. And now we go to Jan Anderson, who lives... Um, I guess that you're kind of in the Bay Area. Tell us a little bit uh, about when you got started and then tell us something really nifty about yourself that's not voiceover related. 
Oh, there's so much nifty stuff to share. Uh, yeah, I am in the San Francisco Bay Area in the wine country region of Sonoma County. I live in a very touristy town called Healdsburg. Yes. And uh, I got into this by way of acting. Um, I started acting in school plays and stuff since elementary school and then got into the technical side of it in high school with sound design and light design. So kept up with the acting too, then got heavily into rock and roll and got played in bands and stuff all through my 20s and early 30s. And uh, then, uh, you know, did other jobs until I found voice acting um, by way of just talking to another voice actor. So, my God, that's a job? That's oh a real God. job? Edward, now, weren't you, in the, uh, weren't you in the band Poison? Uh, no, uh, Dokken. Uh, my uh, my, oh my, God. my Don pseudo Dokken. name is uh, George Lynch. I'm uh, an oh, incredible guitar great. player. And, Ladies um, and gentlemen, Don Dokken. <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So I've been uh, I've been in voice acting for a uh, much shorter amount of time. I've been full time for five years. And um, and tell uh, us and something. A, tell us tell us something cool that's not voiceover related. I'm a damn good cook. How about that? Uh, you know what? We've had private conversations about this, and you know we're getting older when when two guys start talking about their recipes. <laughs> you you know, alluded to oyster stew earlier, and I was like, oh, you know what? Oyster stew. Yeah, it was. Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Hey, you got to try this, man. It, we just it, it's just it's I you know it's unbelievable. All right, Rob Marley, uh, tell us how you got started, maybe why you got started, and then tell us something cool about yourself that's not voiceover related. Rob? Uh -oh. <laughs> Did we lose him? Let me go back and see if Mike got muted. Maybe Rob's offended about everything that we said. <laughs> yeah. Rob, I'm not sure what happened. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. I got to make him a uh, organizer again. Stand by while we experience some technical oh, difficulties. Yes. <laughs> All right, Rob, are you back? Are I you swear back? to God, I was ready to go. I think you got, you <laughs> got here. Can you hear me? You got switched yeah. to the regular uh, uh, listener board, but you're in here now. So, Rob, tell us when you got started doing voiceovers, you know, when or when you got passionate about it or whatever. And tell us something fun about yourself that's not related to the business. <laughs> Um, gosh, I, I started working in, uh, in amusement parks. I worked, uh, sound for, uh, live sound for bands and stuff like that. And I did a lot of announcing just uh, off the recorded spiels and stuff that they had in the park. And, uh, and I got tired of people saying, you know, I, I, you have a really good voice. You should do this for, for, for voiceover stuff. And I, and it was the same thing like, yeah, okay, whatever. I have a great voice, whatever. But uh, I, I explored it a little bit more. A friend of mine gave me a laptop or a pad computer for uh, a tablet computer for, for Christmas a few years back. And I thought, hey, I could record audio with this. And so I started doing voiceover full, full time with, with, uh, as a freelance job. And because uh, I've been doing voiceover all my life during that, before that. And then so, uh, tell us something. I don't know if any of this yourself. is getting out. Are you hearing me at all? Oh, yeah, yeah we, can, we can hear you perfectly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we can hear you great. Tell us something non-voiceover related about yourself, something fun. Mm, I really like to camp. Um, yeah, that's about it. I really like to camp. I, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Burning Man person. I'm a burner, if anybody knows what a burner is. So... <laughs> Well, Terry was talking about your bong earlier, so yeah, no doubt. Well, a, a little bit about Wait, myself. Terry's talking about what? Oh yeah, what now? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to get started here. My name's Terry Daniel. I actually came from the theater and spent about six years in radio, both in uh, alternative rock and smooth jazz. As a matter of fact, I worked for both formats on the same day once, and I had to be like, I had to do the whole alternative rock delivery. And then later that night, I had to be, good evening. This is Terry Daniel, smooth jazz 104.1. <laughs> so you know from from mr guy crazy guy over to the the smooth jazz building it was really quite the uh 
quite the transition from two different formats in literally 12 hours. But I came from radio. I hated it because I was not a fan of, of Clear Channel or any CBS or any of the corporate corporations that took over radio and took all the fun out of it. And I had already done voice acting on the side and just kind of took a leap of faith about 15 years ago to do it full time. And I uh, really haven't looked back since. Uh, I've done also a flurry of on-stage plays, which I miss dearly. Hope to get back to it someday. Um, and here I am. And of course, I, I also like craft beer, baseball, football, and all that kind of stuff. So hey, let's talk voiceovers. I want to I want to dispel a few myths about the voiceover biz. Our our little friend, the troll, up on the screen here. Uh, you know, in this day, it, it, this day and age of the internet and social media, it's really important to you know, when you see something really weird out there or something that might look kind of mythical about our business, it's always good to check in with a pro to see, you know, hey, you know, what, these people are talking about this. Is this the truth? So I really want to talk about some of the myths out there. All you need is a USB mic and a computer. Well, we've heard that a lot. And in my opinion, a USB mic works well for coaching, podcasts, practicing small jobs. And, you know, when it comes time to do actual broadcast jobs, even like through your talent agent, you're going to need an XLR mic and a preamp. Um, and I want to I want to throw this to Jan Anderson real quick. Jan, tell us what you started off with and what you have now for your little home setup. Oh, my God. Well, um, I started off with a used, cheap Samson CO1U USB mic that I thought was just killer. <laughs> and I made like... I made like a, a little uh, cardboard box porta booth lined with packing foam. And oh, I just thought it was so cool. But now I have um, my whole, my, I have a whole bedroom that is acoustically treated with uh, sound panels that are filled with rock wool. And they're in, on my ceiling, on the walls, everywhere. And my go to microphone for the most part now is a Lewitt LCT 550. Uh, from Austria. Not a very well-known brand at this point, but I was turned on to it by a couple other people in voiceover and love it. At least it works great in my room and on my voice. So yeah, I've come a long way. Okay, terrific. And uh, Trish, tell us what you're using. Uh, well, I'm not on it right now, but in my booth, I have the, um, I have a 416, uh, Sennheiser 416 shotgun mic and um, a USB Pre 2 from a company called Sound Devices as an inter um, interface and uh, preamp. So that's basically my setup and a, and a PC in the booth. Rob, if you log out and log back in again, I'm gonna cut your fingers off. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I was on a crappy Wi-Fi connection. I'm on a stabler connection. Now, so okay, should... fantastic. Rob, what are you using for uh, like a mic? And tell us a little I'm bit about your I'm using two pieces of two, a string and two cans, basically. I uh, know I'm using oh, perfect. Uh, perfect. Uh, I've got I've got the classic uh, 416 going on there, and I'm running oh, into a uh, nice. Stein... Yeah, the 416. I'm running into a Steinberg uh, Steinberg UR12 uh, interface. I had a, a DBX286 that I was using in some outboard compressor gear, but I'm kind of doing everything as plugins now and getting rid of a lot of the outboard gear. So it's basically just that straight into the computer and pretty clean signal. That sounds great. So Jan, is it true? Do you have to move to LA to be successful? Absolutely. Isn't everybody in voiceover in LA? <laughs> this is probably, yeah. I probably see this, you know, there's, I can't remember the name of the website. I think it's called, uh, oh my God, it's going to slip my mind, but there's, there's all kinds of voiceover blogs on it. And they're, they're basically content writers that have no idea about what our profession is like. And you always see this one that you have to move to LA to be successful. It's yes, I have my own private jet and I commute every day from Northern California down to LA. Yeah, no problem. Guess what? No, not at all. There's, there's, there's so much, there's so much uh, work available. Um, uh, now there is some that you kind of have to be in LA for, but most of it, you know, outside of the realm of animation and maybe some video game markets down there, uh, you know, there's so much work available for all of us all around the world. Yeah. And I think you might be talking about like animation, TV promos, movie trailers. I mean, those, you really have to be a part of those big LA agencies to really have a shot at that kind of work. But we, by the way, we're all non-union voice actors. So we do a ton of non-union commercials. We do a ton of like what we call e-learning narration, um, which is, uh, you know, online education pretty much. Um, 
and uh, you know, there's it's you can work with not only clients in this country, but you can also work with clients overseas. So you don't have to move to LA to be successful. You just heard you heard us all talk about a little bit about our home setup, and that's what we use to work with clients all over the seas, uh, all, all over this country and overseas. Because Jan, I know that you work with a ton of clients overseas. Yeah, <laughs> big 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 part of my business is uh, clients in Europe. A lot of them. And, and then Trish, do you have a lot of local clients or tell us where <laughs> your clients are coming from? Actually, I have a lot of European clients also, but um, yeah, I pretty much at work in every time zone, um, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do. I get a lot of narration work from overseas, from European clients, Northern Europe mostly, and uh, Germany and Italy and a few others. But um, yeah, I, I get a decent amount from the U.S. too, from agents and other, you know, and, and just on my own marketing. But, um, you know, the European stuff is interesting because it's, you know, uh, there's not as big of a pool of talent for American voices over there, obviously. Right. Right. That's awesome. And well, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about marketing a little bit later on in the webinar. We'll tell we'll tell everybody on the call a little bit about how we get work. But let's let's dispel another myth out there, because I always read this one that you absolutely need a talent agent to be successful. Um, that is that couldn't be further from the truth. Independent contractor work is thriving. And as a matter of fact, 80 percent of my annual income um, is is by being an independent contractor. So this is by working with producers, business owners, you know, audio visual departments and corporations, which is by the way, a great lead resource that not a lot of people talk about. Uh, everybody that's on this call lives near a giant corporation. And guess what? Inside that corporation, they have an in, they have a, they have a production studio where they work on a lot of training videos and a lot of stuff uh, for the company. Um, for example, I do all the training videos for Subaru of America. So whether you're on the floor selling cars or you're in the factory making the cars, you have to sit through my cumbersome voice uh, for oh. hours and hours and hours talking about rules and regulations of the company. Kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's, you know, there you don't have to have a talent agent to be successful. I have uh, people that, you know, I've had even even students that have been turned down by talent agencies and then they crawl into the corner and, and just like sob for years. Look, we all, we be, between all of us, it feels like we've got about 80 years of experience and all of us get turned down by talent agents. Rob, how many talent agents have turned you down? Oh man. Uh, when I first, when I first started doing this, I, I, I thought the best way to do it would be to carpet bomb all the agencies that I knew of <laughs> and, and send them my homemade demo. <laughs> and, and and it was it, it, yeah it was about 20 it was 20 different agencies and i never heard from one of them uh and and that's just the way it is and you know uh, everybody thinks having an agent is like the be all end all it's like no not really they're just another tool that helps you find work but you know being being part of an agency doesn't mean you're going to get a lot of work it just means you're now swimming in a very big very experienced pool of other with other fish and you better know what you're doing or you're never going to get any work exactly and speaking of recording your own demos i i see these on blogs written by people that don't have the experience to be writing voiceover blogs go ahead and record your own demos like rob marley did and rob how many responses did you get that were positive zero that's right zero. recording your own demos it's kind of the equivalent of an actor or model taking selfies and then sending them to agencies looking for representation. It you really, really don't know what you don't know until you know it. And and the the person that listens to voiceover demos daily, you know, is going to know exactly what they're listening for. And if you don't have that quality, if you don't have that skill, and it doesn't sound like it's professionally produced, they're not going to spend more than five seconds listening to that demo before they kick it to kick on to the next email. Yeah, it's you're just, right. And, you're right. And, and talent agents have it. They, they have an incredible memory for the bad demos and you don't want to get blacklisted or put on the list of, of somebody that had sent them a bad demo. Speaking of bad demos, uh, you're looking at the device that I made my first demo on. It was a Panasonic boombox. And I recorded uh, ads that I would find in magazines and newspapers and I would put it on a cassette and then I sent it out, and I think the demo was like 20 minutes long. Oh, jeez. Yeah, Sweet. Jan, do you have this boombox? 
Uh, I did. Uh, you know, I'm sorry, Terry, but I had to let it go. You know, I had to move up <laughs> to a Walkman. Uh, I know so. you guys are just joking around, but I actually do own that one, and I still have it, and I still play cassettes now and then. <laughs> oh my god, that is fantastic! Well, I do the same thing with a turntable, man. I can't, I just can't let it go. I mean, and you know what? Screw all these new retro like Bluetooth uh bluetooth boombox players because those don't really count you have to have the old boombox where you actually get to play a cassette in you can't hook up your iphone and play your itunes through a boombox that, that just it's doesn't just not the same. no it doesn't count it it yeah. does not it does not count <laughs> But anyway, uh, so don't, you know, uh, you know, this is one of the, don't ever try to record your own demo. And it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to be a, a hobbyist is what I call a voiceover hobbyist, where you're not going to take the profession seriously, and maybe you're going to get a couple of Fiverr jobs, or, you know, maybe you're going to impress your friends and relatives. Yeah, go ahead and make your own demo. But if you seriously want to, you know, make a dent in the business and actually start building up a client list, um, you need to have a, a professional demo produced, and we'll talk about that just a little bit later on. All right. Hey, all it takes is a great voice. Jan? What? what? I'm a professional <laughs> voice actor. All it takes hey, is it, a great it, voice. It, it helps, but, you know, no. The, the most important thing is, can you sound like a normal person in front of a microphone reading somebody else's words? Yes. If you can do that, hey, that's way more important than having a big, huge voice. You know, and we're not trying to say that having a good voice isn't important, but really it's no. the, it's the delivery and the acting that takes precedent. Learn the acting in voice acting. Uh, we know a lot of voice. We have got, a, we know a lot of uh, voice acting friends that are in our community. And I've heard some, some, some of these, some of these guys and gals have just, sometimes they have okay voices, but they have, they just, they do such an amazing job uh, with the words that are on the page. And it's just unbelievable. Uh, Trish. Yes. What, uh, what is your take on <laughs> all it takes is having a great voice? Well, actually it's, it's funny cause still to this day, I'll be at a party or somewhere out somewhere and I get to talking to someone that doesn't know me and I, they ask me what I do and I tell them and they're, and they're almost like, I think that they don't want to be rude, but basically they want to ask me, really? <laughs> Because I've never gotten that reaction from people, even when I was in radio. Uh, I just don't have one of those voices that you necessarily like when I'm t when you're talking to a person, and you know you think, oh wow, they have a, this amazingly you know resonant voice. I don't have one of those, but somehow you know I, I wound up making a living, and but, but people are still surprised as to what I do. I think because I don't have one of those. But well, you turn it on. During, well, you turn it on during your recordings, because a, I, I would have to disagree, because I do think you have a, I do think you have an awesome voice. Well, but it's not. It's something that's that's something that that comes through Trish, on microphone Trish, when Trish, you start. I am, it. Trish, I am right, and you're wrong. <laughs> all right, all right, you're the boss. <laughs> no, I mean, what what I'm saying is like Trish is what she says, and then suddenly she like starts recording a script and then plays it back, and then it's just this this amazing recording where the acting is just incredible. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right, pay to play sites are a great place to start. Well, that can be true, but make sure they're credible and don't just run your business out of pay to play sites. Rob, tell us what a pay to play site is. It's a it's 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 a way to, to throw a bunch of money at a bunch of people and they will tell you that you're a voiceover artist. It's a way to <laughs> you, you put you 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 you're paying money for the privilege of auditioning for voiceover work. It's it's kind of it's kind of janky when you think about it that way, but you're paying a monthly or yearly service, sometimes four hundred dollars, sometimes five thousand dollars for the big sharks that do this. Yes. And 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 you're getting auditions. It doesn't mean you're going to get work out of those auditions. You're just going to audition for for jobs. And and some of the bigger ones brag that they have hundreds of thousands of voice artists to choose from. Well, that sounds great to a guy that wants a single voice for his project. But if you're one of those hundreds of thousands of voices, that means that your ch your chances of getting the job are slim to none. Yeah. You know, it's it's a way it's a way to, I don't want to say practice because really you need to you need to have your skills before you think about getting on a pay to play 
but it's a good way to continue to hone your skills, continuing education, keep learning your voice. It's, it's, it's a good way to, 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 to make sure that your voice is marketable the way it should be, but it shouldn't be your only source of income. It shouldn't no, and it be shouldn't be. And I'm not, I'm not a big, you know, there's, there's pros in our industry. I'm not a big pay to play hater. Hey, if you can get a few clients, uh, from some of these sites, like, you know, like a voice one, two, three, or a Bidalgo, I mean, go for it. But I, you, you just have to be careful not to put all your eggs in the pay to play sites. Cause I also know people that just sit there from sunrise to sunset doing nothing but mm. auditioning on a pay to play yeah. site. And guess what? If you would have spent that nine hours marketing directly to producers and businesses and corporations, your your ROI is going to be much higher than sitting there on a voice one, two, three, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, auditioning with 10,000 other people for a $200 job. I mean, it's okay yeah. to spend like an hour maybe on it or so, but Jan, didn't you used to, uh, when you first got started, didn't you have at least some success doing this? Yeah, I did. Um, well, <laughs> this was before Voices.com <laughs> went the oh way of Oh, my God, he just and... used the F word. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but I did well there. The As a matter of fact, I still have clients that I gleaned from there. And that yes. was years ago. Oh, yeah. And uh, I was also on, but, you know, whatever one you're using, try to, they're all different and they all have different algorithms and you'll many people find that they do better on one than another um you know it's a much much smaller part of my business than anything else at this point and uh you know yes it can help you get some clients in the bag help you get some experience but i agree with you that uh, direct marketing is by far a better way of spending your time Absolutely. De definitely. Mm -hmm. And don't, and don't ever, and by the way, don't ever get brainwashed into believing and, and pay to play sites are great at this. Hey, if you put a banner on your website, oh. our website, uh, you, you know, you'll move up in Google. That could not be further from the truth. Uh, you do that and suddenly you get a few prospective clients that are visiting your personal site. Suddenly they click on a banner for voices.com and poof, they're gone forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You've just made it made the voice seeker one click away from hundreds of thousands of other voices to choose from. Right. And by the way, then that's that nothing. For, uh, yeah. And, and cro you know, linking up like that and putting a banner to voice one, two, three on your personal website does absolutely zilch for your SEO. So don't believe it. that's just promo. That's, that's them trying to keep you a part of this kind of, they, they try to instill, they try to institutionalize talents. It's like they try to keep, it's like the Shawshank redemption. They want to kind of keep you in there, you know, for years and years and years and years. And by the, you're so used to it after so many years that you're afraid of the outside. Well, yeah, but you, you think that because you're auditioning for so many things that you're really making inroads into your career when, right. unfortunately, yes. most of the time you're just spinning your wheels. Yeah, I yeah, agree. exactly. You spend all day auditioning and at the end of the day, end of the day it's no one's still going to know who you are. Mm -hmm. And like right. I said before, mm -hmm. spend most of that time actually doing some cold calls or emailing some production companies or companies that you live by. Uh, it's what we're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Um, Here's another myth. You have to spend thousands of dollars on a home studio. Well, I, I tell you what, and we're all uh, witnesses to this. Good recording equipment has never been more affordable. I mean, I've got a I've got an Apollo twin preamp that powers a TLM 103. The only thing I did uh, for my recording booth is I put up some sheetrock in my basement and put a bunch of RLX foam. Now, I did luck out because my ceilings are very low and they have kind of a foamy type. I don't even know what it is. It's uh I'm not uh, obviously I'm, I'm horrible at this kind of thing, but I've got like a big shaggy rug underneath. And I, I, I did kind of luck out with my space. But between all of us, I don't think, you know, I mean, Jan, how much have you spent on your equipment? Well, <laughs> I want spent to... more than I had to. I want you just to because I'm, dollar you, know, in, you know, um, a thousand bucks, something like that. Uh, no, no, I've got more than that. Um, in my studio, outside of the recording equipment, I've probably got about a thousand bucks plus my recording equipment. Very cool. And it's, you know, it's, you have to be careful too, not to put the cart before the horse. You know, it's okay to buy equipment as you're kind of learning, but you really have to learn the skills. I mean, learn how to read a script. People have, you know, people all over social media have, have gear. I call it gear lust. 
and they're so into, oh my God, hey, what kind of microphone and preamp should I buy? And then you give them a script to read and it's embarrassing. Learn how to actually read the scripts and learn the skills before you start, you know, uh, delving into all kinds of equipment. I mean, I, I'm not saying, you know, don't buy a microphone, but man, especially the guys, you know, they just, it's, it's gear lust. Well, that and also um, you're uh, usually for most people when they're starting out their ears, they don't know, they're not trained to listen to things objectively. And right. so as you get more experience, you can hear more accurately what's going on in your own room. So then you can make adjustments as you go on. So you can, yeah, sure. You start making some money, you can reinvest that into perhaps better gear or different gear that's more suited to you. Well, I don't know. I made a living for, I mean, I, I, you should never just have a USB mic, but I have to be honest with you. I did get a few e-learning clients and even did a couple of audio books when I was upstairs with, I think I had like an MXL mic. You could hear like traffic going down highway 169 and you could hear the neighbor's lawnmower. <laughs> I mean, I had, I, I had to stop recording. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't allow that into the recording, but uh, these days, as long as you have the right room to record in, you can really get away with very little. Would you not agree with that, guys? Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right. Yep. Okay, I hear yeah, this one all the time when people want to get into voiceovers. Oh, I'm not going to bother. It's too competitive. Well, can you guys name one profession? How about how about the medical field? Do you think that's competitive? How about being a photographer? You know, it, it, mm -hmm. voice acting is too competitive, you know, on camera acting, real estate sports. You don't think there's trillions of people trying to get into that. Um, you know, the key is to separate yourself from a competition by doing it right and taking the proper steps. And this is such this whole thing like, oh, don't go into voiceover. It's competitive. is such a ridiculous scare tactic, because if you're in the you know, if you're a creative and talented person and you're really passionate about something, do you really care how many other people are doing it? Mm. I mean, no, because there's only one, okay. there's only one you and only you can deliver a script the way that you do. And a lot of the time that'll be what wins you the gig. Um, and sometimes it'll be what loses the gig for you because you weren't quite the right voice for that, for that project. But um, if you're, if you're, um, if you're giving stellar performance and stellar service, then um, there's no reason why anybody can't find success in this business absolutely and you know the thing is it, that it, it it is difficult to to get work i mean it, to be consistent with it you have to be consistently passionate about what you do you have to it, it's it's effort to 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 find the clients and to to get the relationship started and to get the work hot and get the work going it takes effort it's not just sit in front of a microphone that you just spent money on and and money will come spitting out of your computer. It just doesn't work Wait a that minute. way. I, I, but I have, new, I have the new iMac and money spits out of it all the time. <laughs> in fact, no, a lot of people look, at all these, the... look at all these 50s coming at me. You know, a lot of people say that the work in voice acting is finding the work. Yes, mm -hmm. yes absolutely. Yeah. It's, it, the, the job is the, is the frosting on the cake. Yeah, right. I love mm -hmm. it. I love it. And I hear this all the time, too. Training isn't necessary. Oh, my God, this is the biggest oh. bunch of hogwash I've ever heard. Uh, you know, because there, there's always there's outdated book titles that'll tell you that you can do all of this stuff yourself and that coaching or training isn't necessary and you can do the demos yourself. I mean, would, how, how would you feel about hiring a plumber who had no training? <laughs> you know, I could call my neighbor. Oh, I've never done it before, but I got a good set of tools. <laughs> I mean, would would you be confident in bringing somebody into your home like that? No, absolutely. No, obviously, no. Yeah. By the way, here, here's something: if you are interested in agency representation, training is absolutely mandatory. Because if you call up a talent agent, um, they're going to ask you, "Okay, well, what kind of coaching have you had? Do you have professional demos?" You know, I have friends all the time. I am my. Our, Trish, our good buddy Eric Shepard shares some of the greatest stories where people will actually call him at night and they'll just start mm -hmm. doing different cartoon voices. <laughs> oh, my God. All over the phone. Nice. Like, hey, I haven't had any training. I don't have a demo. But, hey, listen to these seven voices I can do. And, by the way, it's like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I'm like, Eric, you got to stop answering the phone. Too. 
<laughs> this, this could not uh, this could not be further from the truth. All right, enough of the myths. Let's talk about how to really, really get started, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take you f uh, through a few steps right now. By the way, if you have questions, anything related to voiceovers. Uh, we're going to, let's see, what time is it now? Okay, we're doing pretty well. We're just about to the 20 minute before seven mark, probably about 10, 15 minutes, you know, before the end, we'll, we'll take a few questions. We'll even do it live. But let's talk a little bit. We always encourage, you know, we're obviously we're voice actors, but we also have a coaching company, but we always encourage um, our students or our prospective students or people who are looking to maybe work with us to do some research first. Learn all you can about how the voiceover business works. You know, join reputable VO groups on social media. And, and honestly, I should have put reputable in caps because there's, <laughs> there, there's, there's questionable voiceover groups that are moderated by people who have zero experience. And it's kind of like the blind leading the blind. Uh, I'm not there's a yeah there's a there's a lot of groups out there that I mean and there's a lot of great information out there too. I always say tell people when I'm when I'm talking to people and they want to get into this I always say be a sponge. Yeah. Absorb as much as you can. It's like when you're trying to learn a language, you have to immerse yourself in that language. You have to learn everything there is to know about the voiceover industry and all that stuff. You have to and you have to learn it from multiple multiple resources well now, some resources are are going to be crappy and and yeah. you're not going to know that until you start learning the seeing the big picture and eventually you'll start looking at those other sort of resources that you heard and what you, you did some research on and realize oh that guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about well and you, you know? have to spend you have to spend a lot of you have to spend you know a, a good amount of time doing it because especially with social media yeah. where you've got a million chefs in the kitchen everybody's an expert everybody's you know everybody in a facebook thread is constantly trying to outdo each other or prove how smart they are um yeah. by, by one upping the comment above them um and sometimes it's really it's really horseshit information to be quite frank um hey are you guys yeah. offended by harsh language fuck no <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh my God, we just lost 20 people. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm logging off right you know, now. I told everybody. I'm ready to a worded letter. This is going to be a candid presentation. So just be careful what you hear because, you know, again, there's VO groups where, you know, anybody could start a voiceover group. That doesn't necessarily mean they're a voice actor who's making a comfortable living. I'm not going to pick on any any group uh, specifically, but there's a flurry of them out there. You know, read blogs, reputable blogs, listen to podcasts and, you know, research, study the business as much as you can. Uh, I want to talk about the coaching and the practice Um stage of your your research um very very important we all of us everybody you know jan trish myself we've all worked with not one coach but multiple coaches on our skills and our business you know knowing how to deliver the copy and then practicing just like crazy i mean i uh you know after doing it all these years i will still try to put an hour or two aside a week and like practice, even if they're older scripts, I just practice on my own. Do you guys still practice? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Really? You know, okay. Oh. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I still I still have a coach that I check in with every couple of months, maybe six months or so, just to kind of keep up with the latest yeah. trends and stuff. Well, that's the, but that's I, the I, same I, as practicing, you know, and, and what people need to understand too is coaches get coaching. You know, we're not Absolutely. we're not like we're not the ultimate gods of voiceover where we have the perfect delivery. We have the perfect ideas. We have the ultimate solutions for your business. I mean, I, I hope our tips will, you know, will help you grow. And obviously, nobody wants you to be more successful than we do. But it doesn't mean that it's our way or the highway. So, you know, even. I tend to slip into, you know, I'm from Minneapolis, so, you know, my O's and my A's and our R's, you know, I tend to slip into the to the Minnesota accent just a little bit every now and then, especially when I'm, I'm really tired and off my medication. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> you you never stop learning. I mean, if you're doing yeah. it right, there's always an opportunity to learn. I mean, I, I say I practice all the time, uh, even when I'm not doing auditions and stuff like that, I'm reading out loud. I'm listening to the sound of my voice and learning what works the right way and the wrong way when I'm phrasing things. I'm always double checking what I'm saying and how I'm reading and I'm practicing my, my sight reading skills. You know, cold reading is not an easy thing to learn. So anytime I have an opportunity to read out loud, I'm doing it. 
And how often do we hear about A-list actors going back and studying with their coach? You know, the you you always it's mm-hmm. always a good idea to brush up on things. Make sure you're not getting lazy. Um, Absolutely, that kind of thing. Yeah. And what, Jan, what would you think, if, give me like, I mean, other than the bullet points that are on the slide, give me your take of like maybe three or four uh, reasons why somebody who's brand new to this would need to hire a voiceover coach. Well, first of all, you don't know what you don't know. And a voiceover coach can help you find that out quicker than just about anybody out there. You, you can't rely on the on the well wishes of your family and friends saying, oh, that sounds great. Well, they don't know what the market demands. Um, <laughs> so, so that's a biggie right there. Um, and knowing how to interpret different types of copy, knowing how to punch something without punching too hard right. um, with a hard sell piece or something like that. There's, there's so much nuance to be learned and absorbed and to incorporate into reads it's that's what this business is all about is it's like a uh, it's like a painter's palette what what do you want to do with with your read you want to add a little red you want to add a little brown you want to add a little green you know there's nuance and mixing of all different ki- types of things and it's amazing how just the slightest turn of a phrase can make a huge difference in the way something is read that's why they're called artists and not yes. you know, voice people. <laughs> right, or just voices. <laughs> yeah, just voices. Yeah, it's voice art- artists. What is the weirdest, you know, and then, you, you know, obviously learning to take direction from a client is, is very, very important. You know, everybody in this industry, whether they're new or they're experienced, everybody tends to get kind of focused on their voice. Oh, it's all about my voice. You know, I have a great voice. You know, you know what? Using your ears in this business is just as important because I know a lot of talented people that have golden voices who are horrible at taking direction from a client. You have to be able to make tweaks in your delivery. You have to make sure that you you are able to make all kinds of adjustments, even if it's really weird direction. Trish, do, uh, do you have a real quick <laughs> client story where they gave you some really odd direction and you almost like didn't agree with it but you kind of like bit your tongue because they're paying the check uh yeah actually i'll 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 use he used one word that has literally never been used before or since and i'm still scratching my head on it but he asked me to sound rounder (laughs) (laughs) rounder Rounder. oh my god how in the hell is somebody supposed to sound rounder I don't know. Chris, I that was to be thirty percent more round. So you basically, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you I like basically like wind. Up. I'm gonna write that one down. I think. Yeah, pretty, it's pretty uh, pretty it was it service. was interesting. I remember looking because it was actually an in person. This was years ago. It was an in person session, and so I was in a booth and I could see him through the glass, and he's like, "Could you just make it a little rounder?" And I'm like looking at him and I'm, and I basically in my head, I'm like WTF, but I'm, but the look that I gave him was, Oh dude, I have, I I know exactly what you're talking about. And I did the read again. And he was like, that was perfect. Yeah. Oh my God. (laughs) That's exactly the way to handle it. That's perfect. That is pretty, you did, you took it like a pro. I had one time I had direction from uh, a guy who says, you know what? It, it, it's a really good read and we like your voice. It sounds a little too radio announcery. Can you sound like a DJ instead? <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, just do it like I just did. Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? You got it. I thought, okay. the, I thought the, the, the call was cutting out or something. Like I had missed a bunch of information. That was, that was just really, really weird. But, uh, you know, and a coach can help, you know, with the setup of a voiceover business, too, because you have to be more than just a talent. You have to be able to set up your business and be able to bill correctly and send the invoices. And um, it's, you know, it's taxes. Yeah. Do do the taxes. I think sometimes people get lost in the fact that this is a business. It's not just, you know, hey, man, I got to, you know, I just lost my job. I want to start making money doing voiceovers tomorrow. You know, it's it, you've got to build it from from the ground up, you know, brick by brick. I don't mean to get, you know, to start using all these goofy, you know, business or sales analogies at all. But it's really no different than, uh, you know, starting any kind of a business. And it's going to take a while. Absolutely. Let's let's go to uh, in the interest of time. Let's move to professional demos. Uh, for one, your coach is going to let you know when it's demo time. Um, I don't believe in a talent just 
you know, going right into a studio and doing a demo without any coaching, unless they've been a professional voice actor for several years. And then, you know, then it's fine. But if you're just getting started, you definitely need to, to work on the skills and your coach will typically let you know when it's demo time. And that might be three months. It might be a year. You know, the time should never matter because if, if you want to have the best shot at this, I mean, does it matter if it's six months to a year? And, and, you know, we, um, we, we do a great job coaching our students, but we're not really fast. <laughs> you know, there's a, li- there's a little bit of time, you know, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get through our programs and, and people's demos are, are, are that much better because we didn't rush anybody through the program. Go ahead, Trish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, um, I actually forgot. So go ahead. <laughs> well, well, sometimes it, it, sometimes it helps to, to space your, um, your directed sessions, you know, script interpretation sessions out from week to week so that you get a chance to really absorb and practice what you learned the previous week. So there, mm-hmm. there is a sort of a method to the madness, not always is an immersive sort of program, the most beneficial where yeah. it's just, you know, you're trying to jam all this information to your brain and, you know, you just don't absorb it like that. Yeah. You yeah, need I mean, time to, to understand the processes. Yeah. 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 There's, and there's demos, companies out there that do an eight hour, one eight hour class with like multiple people and you're supposed to learn everything all in one day and then oh, they get God, thrown in a booth worst. and it doesn't get, it doesn't get no. done that way. And, no. and so the P I, and thank you, Jan, for refreshing what I was going to say. Cause that's basically it was, you know, anybody that I work with, any student, I always try to tell them at least space their coaching, their script coaching sessions out at least a week in between, because you need some time to absorb the information that you get from the coach in a session and then start to really kind of put it into practice. And it takes some time to really absorb it and actually start to, to, to use it regularly. You're not going to wind up doing it like overnight. Yeah. So that it becomes instinctive. It's something Mm -hmm. you can just go to right away. Um, Yeah. And I'm sorry, these weekend, these weekend seminars are not going to prepare somebody for a demo. I know they're, they're popular and they're out there, but um, I don't know anybody that's going to be uh, ready for a demo after an eight-hour Sunday seminar. You know, honestly, mm-hmm. those weekend those weekend classes are a great way to kind of like it's like reading the back of the book jacket. You know, it's like it's a good idea to like give you give you a ballpark picture of 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 what what it's all about. But if you really are serious about getting into voiceover, you're not going to learn crap in a in, on a weekend class. It takes time. It takes skill. It takes patience to get the muscles in your throat to work the way you need them to. It's, it's and it needs to be muscle memory. It takes work, mm-hmm. and it, you're yeah. just not going to do it over a weekend. Right on. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked a little bit about marketing. I want to touch base on that a little bit because obviously that's a big part of the business, and you have to be able to reach out, meet with people in person. You have to be able to do some cold calling. You have to be able to email some people. Uh, you, you really can't be successful without people knowing you exist. And, um, you know, along with a cold calling and email, you know, having a social media presence, I probably get a dozen and Trish, you've done really well with social media, but between Facebook and LinkedIn, I easily get a dozen brand new clients every year just from making connections Mm -hmm. with people and really just, just having conversations. I'm not, I'm not one of those people on Twitter. It's like, Hey, you need a voiceover. I'll do it for 15 bucks. Tweet me back, jackass. (laughs) You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not putting a big for, you know, I'm not putting a big sale sign, you know, on a Facebook post or a LinkedIn post or Twitter. I basically try to engage in conversation with potential voiceover buyers. And that's always really worked well for me. And, um, and Trish, I think you've got like a trillion followers on Twitter. <laughs> At least. Thousand, but yeah. <laughs> um, that, or you, 50, it's like close to 16, but. Yeah. Yeah. But I was one of the earlier adopters of of social media. I've been on Twitter since 2008. So, um, you know, and, and I built it up pretty quickly from there. So, um, I, you know, but yeah, Facebook, I use mostly for social, like actual social interaction with either other voice talent or friends and family. Um, but I get a lot of work through Twitter and Instagram right now. And I, I go through, I go through phases for a while. It was LinkedIn, uh, but you, you have to work it. Like it's oh, yeah. not, so it's not just something that just kind of happens. You, you have to, you have to work at it. 
Yeah, and obviously, if you're on a talent agency roster and you're on a good talent agency, you know, you're going to get a good amount of work from from that agent. But, you know, you have to be able to go out there and get the work on your own, too. I mean, this is the era we're living in. We're all uh, independent contractors. And um, Trish, you might, Trish, how much agency work are you doing? Honestly, probably about 15% of my income yearly comes from my agents, and I have seven of them. Yeah, so, I think I think um, that's safe with all of us. Jan, you maybe do a little bit more than that, but is that is that kind of the right percentage for you as well? Yeah, I'm, I would say 10 to 15%, and I've got five or six agents here in the States and several throughout Europe. But uh, yeah, not a lot. I mean, no. It's it's not a bit, it's not a huge part of my income at all. Yeah, so there, I mean, there's just it's what what's so nice about the industry today. But when I got started way back, you know, years and years ago, I think Jimmy Carter was the president. Um, <laughs> he, uh, you know, you really back then there was no internet, so you really had to have a talent agent to have a shot at any kind of work. Uh, it was a lot of legwork. It was a lot of mail outs. It was a lot of phone calls. It was a lot of meeting with people in person. You know, there wasn't, you couldn't just send somebody an MP3 of your demo. You couldn't fill out a form on a talent agency website and, you know, attach your demo to it and submit it to the talent agent. You couldn't reach out to anybody on LinkedIn. It was, it was just tougher to, to get your foot in the door. And if you did great, but man, sometimes it took a year just to get a meeting with somebody and, mm -hmm. you know, Nowadays, it's, you know, the opportunity is um, all around us here. I want to, um, oh, I'm not ready for this one yet. You know, I promised that we'd take a few questions and I'm going to open up the box here and take a few questions. So if anybody on the call is, uh, uh, has a question, here's what you do. All you have to do is raise the virtual hand in the GoToWebinar widget. There's a little hand that you can raise, and I will scroll down and unmute your microphone, and you can ask us a question live. Uh, if you want to ask all of us, that's fine. If you have a certain coach that you want to ask a question, that would be great. But we'll uh, we'll go ahead and uh, take a few of them here. I'm just going to kind of... No throwing tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no kidding, man. No... <laughs> Tomatoes. I like tomatoes. <laughs> well, I mean rotten tomatoes. You know what I'm really, oh. you know what I'm really are, are you guys familiar with skinny pop popcorn? Yeah. Yes. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to it. Oh boy. God. We all have our vices, Terry. <laughs> wouldn't that be a horrible wouldn't that be a horrible way? Like that's the last thing you heard me say before the power went out. <laughs> I really like skinny pop. <laughs> you like popcorn. <laughs> all right let's go to let's go to frederick brown uh he's got a question for us one second frederick you are on with terry trish jan and rob hey guys how y'all doing there this evening oh my yeah, god yeah, listen yeah. to the oh, pipes of frederick brown <laughs> <laughs> uh, i was just curious and of course you don't have to answer this question but uh what was the hardest defeat that you ever had to come back from Oh my God, I love it. Frederick, I, I'm going to mute your mic. I'm, I'll take this one first because it really hit me hard because I was brand new. Uh, the first couple of talent agencies that I submitted to turned me down and I took it so personally. Can you imagine Terry Daniel taking something personally? I mean, what? <laughs> bad joke, bad joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> So that was that was pretty hard, Frederick, because I was fairly new at this and I thought and I had a killer demo coming out of the gate and they still they still didn't take me. And then later on, I got on that roster. But that, you know, I took it personally and I, I seriously, I kind of wanted to give up. You know, you heard us talk about at the beginning of the call, you know, don't don't run into a corner and feel sorry for yourself because you get turned by a talent agent. Because nowadays, you know, you just heard all of us talk about the percentage of work we get on a freelance basis. So hopefully that'll be encouraging and inspiring. But man, back then, I really, really took it hard. Uh, Trish, do you have an answer? Yeah. And honestly, it was within like my first two years of of, of uh, doing it full time. Um, and I had a guy email me, I had reached out to him. He said, sure, send me a demo, I sent him a demo. And he emailed me back and he said, I really prefer voices, female voices that are lower. I, I, I don't really care for yours. It's too nasal. 
over. Oh, and it kind of, it man. hurt. I mean, if somebody, like, I know, I know that I have a nasal voice, obviously. Like, you know, you know, after a certain amount of time in the business, you understand what your voice sounds like and how it sounds to other people. But to actually see it in writing was, was a little bit of a, it was a jab. I mean, it was definitely like, it kind of hit me pretty hard. So it was, a, it was insulting. And, uh, you know, but it was just one guy. And that's honestly, like, it's stuck in my head for a long time. And, Let's go uh, break and his I kneecaps. Thought... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, where is he? Where's his Facebook page? <laughs> All right, well, that, uh, yeah, that's that good. Was... We've got another uh, question. I'm going to bring Pam, I think Pam Roggin or Reagan. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that uh, correct. Uh, yeah, Pam... hi, that's Reagan. Reagan, great. Pam, good evening. What is your question? Good evening. You mentioned earlier about uh, quality podcasts and blogs, and could you just uh, give a couple um, ideas of where I can go, especially podcasts? I love them. Well, of course, we have to plug ours, voiceovercafe.org and voiceoversermons.com. This is where I have a uh, flurry of 10 to 15 minute rants uh, about the voiceover business, but there are a lot of nuggets that you can pick up from. Um, and especially for new people, what is the one, I think it's called the, vo the VO meter that, uh, VO meter. Paul, yeah, Paul Stefano and, uh, and Sean Daly. yeah, Sean Daly mm -hmm. do it. And you know what? They, they don't pretend to be experts. They don't pretend to be pros, uh, making six figures. They're basically just taking you with them, uh, taking you with them on their journey as voice actors. And it's a really humble uh, candid presentation. So that's a pretty good one. You can also just Google voiceover podcasts, voiceover blogs. If you want a really good, tough love blog, there's Paul Strickwerda's blog. Um, sometimes I think he stirs the pot a little too much, but he does have good He's things to purpose. say once in a while. Very candid. You think uh, we're candid. Holy crap. <laughs> he loves, he I loves love the numbers too. He loves the views. So he will mm -hmm. write stuff just like beat writers do to get people to get, get people's eyeballs. But there are a lot of really good resources out there. So, yeah, study up on as many of those podcasts and blogs as possible. If you'd like to ask us a question live, uh, we're going to go a little over you guys. I hope you don't mind because uh, we're, we're almost what? wrapping up. But uh, we're going to go over by about five minutes, if that's cool with you. Tell our affiliates that we're going to be running long. Yeah, I got, we got Sarah Dolan. We're going to take your question live. Um, her mic is not unmuting for some reason. Sarah, I might come back to you. So if you've got a uh, question like, okay, here we go. Uh, Sean Compton. Good evening, Sean. I do recognize your name from voiceover camp. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? I am wonderful. Uh, thank you guys for doing this. First of all. Hey, are you the guy uh, that, secondly. are you the guy that flipped me off on highway 94? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, was unless you were in. Unless you were in Rapid City, South Dakota, I don't think so. <laughs> well, that was, that was another guy he flipped off in South Dakota. Oh, my God. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Totally different guy. Different well, thanks, incident. Thanks for being uh, here. So, we appreciate you taking the time. Uh, what is your question? Uh, so I am active duty military right now. I well, have started narrating a bunch of audio books. Oh, thank you. Uh, I narrate audio books in my spare time, what little of it there is. Uh, so... How much of what you said needs to be modified or, or changed uh, um, strategy wise, if you will, for someone who's looking to get into this starting out, just able to do it part time? Uh, Jan, I'll let you take that one. Yeah, frankly, I don't you know, I don't think there's there's much that can be modified. You just do what you can do when you can do it. Yeah, obviously, the more that you put into it, the more you're going to get out. And it's and voiceover is kind of a hard thing to just kind of dabble in because it requires so much so much dedication to communication, to reaching out to people, tight turnarounds on projects, you know, really trying to kick butt for your clients when you can. Um, that it it's kind of I, I'd have to say that there's no difference if you want to have um, success in this area. It it what the information we're giving you and so much more applies to everybody. It's it's just a matter of what you can do when you can do it. Fantastic, great answer. Let's go to, I think uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correct, Carmina. Uh, sometimes the mics don't unmute for some reason, but Carmina, oh, there she is. Carmina, are you with us? I am, how are you? I'm good, good. What's your question for us tonight? Okay, um, so I 
for me personally, I've been narrating. Sorry, my dog is spazzing out. I've been narrating audiobooks and doing a couple small gigs here and there by dabbling into the voiceover work. But now I'm ready to like commit to trying to doing it full time. So my next step, my next step is finding a reliable and good coach. So how, when you're first doing that, how would you suggest, I guess, finding somebody to help you with that, like for coaching? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you my top four, Trish Bassani, Jan Anderson, Rob Marley, and Terry Daniel. <laughs> Hire us. We've got 80 years of experience. No, kidding. You know, just like doing research for, you know, to learn about the voiceover business, it's important to do the research on voiceover coaches. Obviously, you know, you know, if you want to work with us, that's great. I'll tell you how to get a hold of me, like right at the end of the webinar. But it's important to to do the research as well. And we we really like working with passionate people who are are willing to do what it takes to learn the business. Um, I get a little alarmed when I have phone calls from people that, uh, well, I just got laid off today, so I I need to make tons of money by Friday. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. that, that just proves to me that you haven't done any research on the business and you haven't done any research on the steps. And I, I sometimes I, I, you know, I sympathize with the desperation because we've all been there. We've had hard times in our life. But I'm going to tell you right now, voiceovers is not the anecdote for unemployment. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's a long game kind of a kind of a thing to get into. It's not a get rich quick business. That's no, what that's mm -hmm. what I mean. It's not get rich. It doesn't mean that you can't be successful while you're unemployed, but it's not going to be a quick fix. No, mm -hmm. it's better to transition from something else into voiceover like I did. Um, it was very easy that way just being really smart about how to do it. it. It's not a place to come into from desperation. Definitely not. No. All right. We're going to take one more question and then we're going to wrap things up. Jen McQueen. Good evening. Hey, Terry. How are you? Thanks, Jen, and Jen is actually one of our students. Yeah, I have a first class with you last week and we have our next one tomorrow. And I just wanted to tag on to what the previous woman just said or asked. I found you, Terry, through a colleague of mine, because I'm a former radio person who, and he does voiceovers and you came highly recommended. He, I, he was part of my research and I said, hey, is this Terry Daniel guy legit? He's like, yeah, man, he's legit. So that's kind of where I got part of my research was, you know, a recommendation from somebody that I know and trust in Word the of industry. mouth. The yeah, absolutely. That's huge recommendations. for me. And uh, Jen yeah. has done, I mean, we're just scratching the surfaces of her training program, but she's off to a great start. I'm not saying that just because she's on the call. <laughs> yeah. Actually, she's been <laughs> terrible. Jen is terrible. Yeah. I, get a, I get an F. I'm failing already. Um, yeah. But my, my question, though, was I always hear people talking about, and you guys have mentioned it before um, throughout this webinar, is um, the difference or maybe even, well, difference or pros and cons to, um, union versus non-union like i don't even know there's so much that i don't know but i don't even know like it, it sounds like most people are non-union i guess but what's the difference and what are the pros and cons i'm going to throw that one over to jan anderson boy that's a tough that's a tough question to ask what you really when you're starting out that is one of the well in my estimation it's one of it's one of those things that you really don't need to think about it until you start doing enough work where it's being required that you are a union member or are eligible for you for doing union work right. um now a lot of people love being in the union and that's fantastic i think what you'll have to do is to just see how your career develops at, and to make a, a choice based upon your needs uh, for your business to decide whether you should go union or not. A lot of the time, it's just a matter of how much union work is coming your way. Sometimes you're sort of forced into joining the union. Well, not forced, but encouraged to because there's so much union work coming your way. And people, people who are in the union generally um, really enjoy being in the union. But that is no more a guarantee of success than anything else. You're absolutely right. Um, thank you for the live questions, by the way. And uh, we're going to get to the end of the webinar. You know, sometimes when people try a new profession or if it's voice acting or photography, it's easy to just be kind of, you know, 
people it's hard for people to kind of jump over the roadblock and you know the first thing people are always going to think is oh i I don't think i can do it i can't do it well you need to you need to bowl over those pins because uh it's scary when you especially if you're going to leave like a corporate gig like i did with radio and i had to take a leap of faith you know i had to take a loan out to to start my business but i knew that I was good at this, I was passionate about doing it, and I was going to do everything in my power to make sure that I was successful at it because I sucked at everything else. Still do. <laughs> Still do. Yeah. I, think I, I think I'm too old to be a major league pitcher, so that's not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> So, I mean, you really have to, you know, it's easy to say, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to think about it and do it next week or next month or next year. You know, if you've done all the research and you've been sitting around thinking about it for two years, you know, it's, it's time to get off the fence and and get started today. It really is. Um, Today is tomorrow, as they say. Um, I'm not going to show you our website. I'm not here to do a uh, infomercial about our coaching programs, but I am here to say, Uh, If you like what you heard tonight and you're interested in coaching with us or at least hearing about uh, what we do, um, I've said it a a few hundred times now, I'm sure, but really between all four of us, we have maybe a a little bit less than a century worth of experience. Uh, (laughs) You know, if you tally up. (laughs) How old are we? Well, I'm grading grading on a curve. I think I'm moving up, you know, so. (laughs) But if you are interested, you, uh, you see it on the screen there. You can send me an email, terry at universalvoicetalent.com. Uh, you can feel free to message me on Facebook. If we're not connected, that's fine. We can still use Messenger. A lot of you did come from a couple different voiceover groups, including voiceover camp. So you can go to facebook.com slash voiceover dude. But if uh, email is easier for you, that's terry at universalvoicetalent.com. Send me an email and then I'll send you some information. I'll send you the link to our website and we can kind of talk a little bit about what your goals are and what you want to get out of it. And, you know, all of us kind of brings a little something different to the table. We don't always agree on everything either. We've got different perspectives on on the voiceover business and, and the way we coach. I mean, that's one of the reasons that, uh, people do enjoy working with us because, well, for all, we're, you know, we're all just for one we're, we're crazy for one we're certifiably insane <laughs> well we're in voiceover aren't we yeah, yeah. we are <laughs> yes. required yeah it, lobotomies it required you know we <laughs> we, we, we generally coach our talents either you know zoom or skype and you know rob's in uh, austin trish is in new jersey jan is uh, outside of the bay area and i'm in minneapolis so you get somebody from pretty much every time zone so if you are interested in coaching with us and you've been thinking about this for a long time send me the email Terry at UniversalVoiceTalent.com, and I'd be happy to send you some information about what we do. Um, and in the meanwhile, if you're not in our voiceover camp group, uh, it's Facebook.com slash groups slash voiceover camp. And I spelt the link wrong. Oh, my God. There oh, should, you there the be, e. It's voiceover you know camp. You, you should know, have had me proofread it terry <laughs> i know that's terrible you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna write <laughs> i'm gonna write it in the chat box hang on a minute you can actually click on the link and then go to the group and that's then- okay i've spelled vo wrong before <laughs> <laughs> oh man well i've gotten inquiries from people that have spelled vo wrong <laughs> so boys i'd like to get into bo <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's or, or worse, H-O. <laughs> if you look in the chat box, you can actually click on that link and you can join our voiceover camp Facebook group. And I might as well just put my email in here if you want to send me an email tonight, too. Terry at UniversalVoiceTalent.com. Um, we really appreciate everybody taking the time. We had about, I think, about 90 people on the call, and I know we went over, so thank you for your patience on that. And um, on behalf of Rob, Jan, Trish, and myself, we appreciate you taking time out of your Thursday evening to join us. And uh, Jan, thank you. Any closing words from any of the other coaches? My dog's pissed off. She wants to go for a walk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we got to get out of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> we got all right. We got to get out of here. Uh, thanks so much. I'm, by the way, I'm going to post the recording of this 
uh, tomorrow in voiceover camp. So if some of you came in late or had to bow out early, the recording will be posted in VO camp. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody, and have a good evening. Thank you, Jan, Trish, and Rob. I appreciate you guys as well. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody.